All right, hello everybody. My name is Bryce Crane. Uh, I'm actually currently a uh, traumatic brain. Bryce Krispies. Bryce Krispies. Oh, you're real funny, kid. <laughs> okay, so, uh, I'm currently a traumatic brain injury survivor myself. I've known Rhonda Johnson for almost four years now, actually, after I had my own head injury from a bike accident. I mean, I, during that time, I thought the world has just ended. I mean, junior year, I met in the hospital for what felt like years at the time, just a few months. Um, I was able to graduate, you know, get to college. Here I am almost four years later, and I'm honestly doing fine, and I honestly sometimes forget that I had the brain injury. Uh, one thing that did help me was music therapy, being able to just like cope with my with everything was a good way to just like get rid of like, just help cope with my depression and everything that I had from the trauma. Uh, uh, example of that is uh, Jesus uh, music therapy. So Jesus uh, music therapy services and center is uh, their focus is the overall well-being of the mind and body and the spirit through music. Uh, they provide uh, music services, uh, music therapy, music lessons, uh, also music services um, from, a, uh, from a, uh, facility in San Marcos, Texas, other uh, homes and organizations across Hayes, uh, surrounding uh, counties. Uh, is a full service cl uh, clinical and medical music therapy service provider specializing in uh, biofeedback and neurobiofeedback. They work with individual groups, families, and couples through the broken places and transition roads in, the, in life from, I'm sorry, I did not come prepared for this, in life from in, uh, in the womb and all the way through until death. Until uh, services and businesses, organizations dealing with workplace dynamics, team building, trauma, conflict resolutions, transitions, and self-care. Uh, introducing... Uh, Sherilyn Fair and Chris Lipke. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, sure, I'll keep it. Good morning. How's everybody morning. doing? So my name is Sherilyn Fair. And I'm Chris Lipke. And uh, we're both board certified music therapists. And uh, our practice is GSUS Music Therapy Services and Center LLC. We have a physical location, and that's uh, just north of San Marcos, out in the Hill Country. And we provide contract services uh, in home for people who can't leave their houses. So we travel as far north as Temple and as far south as Universal City, and kind of uh, the counties in between. So. Uh, we're going to talk to you guys today a little bit about what is music therapy um, because most people they think music therapy they think oh well, I have an iPad or you know and I can play music or I got the radio in my car and what we do is a little bit different. Uh, I am the worst with technology so I'm going to really give this clicker business a try so yes. Um, at our practice, our approach is a mind-body-spirit connection, and we say that because we're all a mind, we're all a body, and we're all a spirit. So when something happens to one part of us, it happens to all three parts of us. And so how we feed and nourish and rehabilitate those three separate parts of ourselves is really integral and important to how we recover and how best we recover. So music therapy is a clinical and evidence research-based approach to uh, therapy interventions where we happen to use music within the confines of a therapeutic relationship. We're actually therapists, we actually studied all the psychology and, and all that good stuff, but we also studied the medicine. So we use that and then we use what we know about music to make the difference to address a specific need. Everything that we do um, is goal-based and music therapy is qualified or housed as a complementary alternative medical practice also, as well as an alternative therapy. Uh, we are housed the same as speech language pathology, occupational therapy, <coughs> physical therapy. We just use music and music elements to bring about the same kind of changes. And it makes a big difference in the state of Texas because music therapy is not currently one of those therapies that requires a state licensure. We do have people who say that what they do is music therapy, but if they are not board certified, if they did not go to 
a university, an accredited university, if they did not sit through a board certification exam and if they are not collecting data, what they are doing is not music therapy. Music therapy services can only be offered by a board certified trained clinical clinician. Um, and it makes a big difference. We love our music volunteers. We use them frequently, often. We, we, we appreciate everything that they do, but what they do is separate from what, they do, from what we do. And we use music therapy to address physical needs, emotional needs, cognition needs, spiritual needs. It just depends on uh, what someone comes to us and say they would like to work on as to what we address and how we go about addressing it. Board certification uh, for music therapists is CBMT, or, or CBMT is where every music therapist has to go. And this is after you've done the, the bachelor's program, the master's program, or doctoral program. You actually have to go through an unpaid internship, kind of like all the other therapy practices. And you get to run around and do all and train, and more specifically train if you're going to specialize. Within the state of Texas right now, there are approximately 400 board certified music therapists. We're a little bit like unicorns. We're kind of hard to find outside of a hospital. Um, but here we are. We're, we're actually really here. We love what we do, and we're super passionate about it. The American Music Therapy Association is um, kind of like the American Psychological Association for, for uh, psychologists and psychotherapists. AMTA is that for, for, for board certified music therapists. It's just an organization where we can all come together. They keep a national roster registry. Uh, the certification board for music therapists also keeps and retains a national re uh, registry. So if you are ever looking for a music therapist, you can go to cbmt.org or musictherapy.org and one of those organizations will tell you if, if there is somebody in your state, in your county, in your area that you can use or utilize and it usually has all their contact information listed. Ah, a lot of people think music therapy is a lot of fun and it is because our goal is always that what you experience looks like, feels like you are being able to participate with and enjoy music. But this is actually a little bit of what's taking place. We just put some of the things on here because if we put it all, well, this, we'd be here forever. It's, it's, you know, so some of what we do uh, and some of the, the, the issues, the presentations and uh, presenting conditions that we work with to date um, and historically based on the research and personally as, as, a, as a clinician, I've been doing this for a little over 20 years. I have not yet found uh, diagnosis that I cannot work with. I haven't found um, a severity of diagnosis that I haven't been able to work with where we haven't had gains and, and progress has been made. Um, I haven't found an income that I haven't been able to work with. Um, if there is a need and there is a willingness to do the work, then, then my goal, job, and whole focus is to show up and meet you where you are. In therapy, we call that the ISO principle. We just meet you where you are and we help you transition to where you would like to be. It's your therapy, so what you need is what we do. Um, we work with a lot of neuroscience. There's a, a lot of neuroscience in what we do, a lot of medicine in what we do, and there's also just a lot of straightforward psychology in what we do. And all of it is based in research. Uh, music therapy, fun fact, actually started during the time of Aristotle. So some of our research and data and information that we get goes all the way back to, to the BC times. Fun times, yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm special, I sing like almost everything I say, so I, I might sing it, you guys, a little bit. And music therapy works because fun fact, it's one, music is one of the few things in life that we can engage with that actually activates all of our brain at the same time. Um, and it has so many benefits, and mostly it's because we're all born into a culture, a society, a community, a family, a neighborhood, an area where music is alive, it has a purpose, it has a function, and we use it for everything that we do. So, you know, you've got your holiday music, you've got special event music, you have uh, I'm gonna do things music. Um, I was talking to somebody about this earlier today. I. It's, it's a build yourself up kind of music, so it's a personal soundtrack that you have for yourself. There is nowhere where we cannot use music. Research does tell us 
um, and ethnomusicology in traveling around will t will, has proven to us that there's about 1% of the world's population that does not respond to music because they do not use music. It has, they have no actual functional musical vocabulary. So unless you're part of that 1% of the population on the globe, music's for you. Music therapy is for everybody and it works for everybody because we use your preferred music. We don't just come in and start playing music at you. We use the music that you prefer to bring about the change that you desire. So um, we have some elderly people that really love Metallica and ACDC. <laughs> and <laughs> we try and use the more therapeutic versions. So instead of enter night, you know, we slow it down and make it a little acoustic. Um, but we also have some young people who really like old, old country music. And I say old, old, but you know, Hank Williams, not that old. Um, but he is considered the grandfather of what we know and now understand as modern day country. He's considered the grandfather of that. Some of our younger people really enjoy that. So we find what music it is that you like, that you enjoy, and we bring that back to you in a therapeutic way to help you address your goals. So music therapy is kind of like, here's your target, we're going to come around to the side. We're going to address your goal, it's just not going to look like what you would expect from therapy. And we do this because music serves as a strong motivator to allow someone to engage with something that is, might be challenging to them, something that might be new to them, something they've never experienced before, and we're using the music to serve as a foundation. It's kind of the bowl that's, that the, everything sits in. So we use the music to facilitate skills, strengthening, to develop new skills. In music therapy, we work within specified domains, so everything that we do is goal-based and it has a specific purpose. It's either to improve, to redirect, to maintain, to teach a new thing or a new strategy, um, to restore something that a skill or a function that may have been lost to bring it back to someone. And we also do this just for the sake of wellness. It is important that as a mind and body and spirit that we are all well because our physical health is not separate from our mental health. If you're mentally unwell and you do nothing or little to maintenance that, then eventually within a three year window is what research tells us, you will have a physical manifestation of whatever that thing is. And if you think about mind, body, spirit, I like to explain it this way. What we think about, we talk about. What we talk about, our whole body hears. We don't just hear with our ears, we hear, we hear with our skin. We hear through the pores in our skin. We hear through our joints. We hear through all the systems that work within us. So anytime we think about something, we talk about it, we feel it, wash, rinse, repeat. We think about it, we talk about it, we feel it. And as this cycle goes on, our brains experience about 17,000 thoughts a day. And if you have one negative thought, you've told yourself that negative thing 17,000 times that day. But not just told yourself that, you've talked about it and you felt it. And so we use music to redirect those things to help bring about a new normal. And <clears throat> We do this for rehabilitation purposes. Sometimes we have people who have gone through amputations, surgeries, um, they've gone through a traumatic brain injury, they've gone through cancer or some, something that has changed what they determined was normal. And the first thing we like to tell everybody is there's no such thing as normal. Everybody has issues in one way, shape, form, or fashion somewhere in their life and how they deal with it in that place in their life will then bring about a domino effect into the rest of themselves. So we do this for rehabilitation purposes. We do it to restore something that may have been lost. We do it to improve things that may be existing, but we need them to function at a little bit better functioning level and skill level. We do that. Um, we also do it to help with support because um, I guess the, the best and worst trick that, that's out there is that sometimes people get into a place where they're going through something and they begin to think that they're alone, that they're the only one. No one's going to ever understand what this feels like. Our job is to make sure that you know you're not alone. We're here to support you and we're going to help you through providing a soundtrack for you that allows you to have a soundtrack for your life. Because everybody uses music. If you're having a bad day, we all probably have that go-to song. I'm going to play this song. I'm going to feel a little bit better. Once I feel a little bit better, 
things will be all right, I can get up off the couch. And if you're having a really bad day, you have that one song, you know it will make you cry anytime you hear it. You play that song, you sob it out. Sometimes if you're really honest, you play that song 30 or 40 times, you really cry, and then you go take a hot shower, get up, wash your face, and you keep going. Well, in music therapy, we do that, but we do it intentionally. There are different ways, different chords, different sequences of notes in music that we can use that will stimulate those responses from someone. And that way they can have that experience where they're experiencing it, leaning into that feeling, whatever it is, mind, body, spirit, and letting it go. In music therapy, this says non-invasive. Uh, Music can be non-invasive. It can be like a banal thing, you know, you just kind of have the weather channel playing in the background and it's got music playing all day. But it can also be a highly invasive thing. You ever have somebody, you know, you're in a bad mood and somebody comes in and they're playing a song like, I'm walking on sunshine. And you're like, no, we're not walking on sunshine right now. We're sitting in the dark and we're feeling. There's Music can be something that invades because it is one of the few things in life that we can engage with that literally stimulates ourselves from the inside out. So music is an internal thing that makes its way out of us. Our brains, uh, there's something called a dendrite, and it's this little ganglion cell that's in the brain, but this dendrite has an electric pulse. And that pulse happens to a specific beat, to a specific rhythm. So now we have a dendrite synapse that's in our brains. That regulates how our hearts work and our hearts beat to a specific rhythm. What we should hear is a lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. But sometimes the more upset you are, or the more frustrated you are, that lub dub sound isn't happening the way that it's supposed to. And it's because this system isn't talking to this system the way that it's supposed to. So we use an external beat to entrain and retrain what's happening within the body to bring about a change. We breathe to a certain pace, we walk to a certain pace, we even talk to a rhythm. So each of us is literally a whole entire cuckoo clock happening in here, you know? We've got this cog going that, that moves that cog, that moves this wheel, that moves that bell, and that's how our bodies are constructed, so we use the music to meet that, match it, and then change it. And we do this all through assessment. Music therapy, um, what you see and experience is a good time through music and, and, and musical elements, but we collect a lot of data because data is what makes the difference. And we are watching for small changes, we're watching for big changes, and all of that, the data that we're collecting is the data that comes from you. It comes from your heart rate. It comes from your brain wave function. It comes from how well you are matched into your circadian rhythm, how well you're matched into what your natural biological rhythm is. We use all of that data to help bring about the most effective change and the most uh, efficient change as quickly as possible while doing it safely with a person. And so um, in assessment, it allows us to look at the whole self. And because we're a mind, a body, and a spirit, we look at the mind, the body, and the spirit. We look at your sleep cycle. We look at your diet. We look at your, your exercise routine. We look at everything that's happening. If you have a, a spirituality or a religious practice that you, you or faith-based that you use, then we use that too. Whatever it is that you need to feel supported, mind, body, spirit, we use that. So we use world music because we have, we're very fortunate and blessed. We have uh, clients that travel to us from the Middle East and they come all the way to the great state of Texas to have their therapy. Um, Wherever you are, if we can't get to you, you can always come to us. Our services are contracted to anyone who wants to have therapy. Um, everybody who comes to us, though, we do not always treat. Because after we go through assessment, we, we assess communication skills, your ability to speak, your ability to receive speech, your ability to follow sequence directions, your ability to make sequence directions. Um, your cognition patterns, your ability to receive input and data, your ability to output data that, that has come in. And this is all person specific. There is no one size fits all in music therapy. We're one of those customized treatment um, modalities in that everything is different for every single person. Your heart rate does not match the heart rate of the person next to you. 
we can make that happen, but naturally it doesn't. So everything that we assess about you, communication, cognition, your motor skills, can you lift your whole arm? Can you make a circle? Can you do this? You know, Palmer grass, pincer grass, these are things that we look at because sometimes when we encounter something, there's a trauma to one part of us. The trauma extends to all of us. So we use the music to look at these things. And our goal is always that the person in front of us has the opportunity to feel successful because music belongs to all of us. It's not, it's not mine, it's not yours, it belongs to all of us. So we like to make sure that no matter what we're doing, even in assessing, you still have the opportunity to feel successful and to feel like the music that is happening, that is taking place around you, is not just around you, it belongs to you. So we also assess affect. Um, a hallmark of traumatic brain injury and many other injuries is that the ability to make facial expressions becomes lost, sometimes for a season, sometimes for longer than that. But when that's lost, that doesn't mean that these things don't exist. So our job is to find how these skills, how these functions, how these behaviors exist for a person in the midst of the trauma. We also assess musicality. Now you have to have zero music skill to be able to participate in music therapy. You don't have to be able to sing. You don't have to be able to dance. I'm one of the world's worst dancers and I love that about me. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, break dancing is good, right? See, you don't have to have any skill. This is something that you can engage with because our job is to bring it to where you function. Not above where you function, not below where you function. We bring it to where you are able, and we use what you are able to do, and we build on that. We also assess your biorhythm. So for, at, at our practice, because we are both a clinical and a medical practice, we do assess your heart rate. So we're taking your, your heart rate information. We're taking your pulse information. We're using all the fancy machines. We plug you up to things. They are non-invasive. We use different... Uh, different tools than, than is what is used specifically in the hospital environment, but we do use things that are similar. So uh, when you go to a hospital, you know the first thing that they do is they make you wait, and then they make you wait some more, and then they hook you up to a machine, and the machine tells them what is your, your, your blood pressure, and what's your heart rate, and what is everything happening. We do all the same things. The data that it provides us just lets us know where you're functioning that day. And, it, and because of the way that we collect the data, uh, one of our machines tells us in the moment if something happens in your body. And so in the moment, we're able to make a change to what it is that we're doing to then help you bring about a change that keeps your body talking to itself in a healthy way. And we do this all through listening, moving, playing, and singing activities. It sounds really simple, but it can get a little complex, um, but there are ways to move our bodies that create specific entrainment between our different systems. So our brain system will begin to work with our cardiovascular system, our cardiovascular system with our digestive system, our digestive system with our respiratory system, and it's one big domino effect. So every time we start an activity, we're knocking over a domino to knock over something else. And we do this in our practice based on uh, a holistic concept and approach. We like to start with this idea of unconditional positive regard. Every person is a person. Every person is a person independent of a diagnosis. Every person is having a human experience independent of a diagnosis or label that is on them. So we treat people like they're people first, like they have a symptom later. Uh, it's not that we ignore the data, we don't ignore the diagnoses, uh, we, we stay within the confines of those things, but we make sure that the person gets the opportunity to feel 100% like a person. So they're not just TBI laying in bed 14, hasn't been able to do these things in the last 17 days, stats say dot, 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 moving on, and then the person is left there screaming on the inside and they can't get anything out. We treat the person because Everyone has the ability to communicate. We just have to figure out how they communicate, where they're able to communicate, and what works best for them in that time. And so we start with everybody has free will. Therapy is a choice. You get to choose. If you're having a good day, if you're having a bad day, you get to choose whether or not you have your therapy or choose to 
how you're going to engage with it. If you are sitting in the midst of a bad day and you have no words, but you have a mm, then we use your mm and we turn that into music and we give it back to you so that way you are not left out of your own human experience. Always unconditional positive regard. We don't have anything else to offer you. Therapy is not a personal experience for us. It is a human experience for us, but it's not personal for us. It's your therapy. So what you need your therapy to look like, we are that objective place where we hold a safe space for you to be and, and function and do however you need to. So if that means hollering, we don't mind hollering. If that means cussing because that's what you have that day, then, well, we, we, we've, we've had that. And, um, it is what it is, no condemnation, no judgment, because that's where you are, but it is not where you will end up being. So our job is to help you get better. And we always keep in mind, we're dealing with the mind, the body, and the spirit. So at my practice, I actually do provide for those who want to have spiritual-based services. I provide certified ministers. I don't believe um, that it is appropriate to have somebody sit in front of someone and say, this is what I want to work on, and the person in front of them is ill-equipped. To, to deal with it, they don't understand it. So if somebody has a spiritual concern, in addition to being a board certified music therapist, I do make sure that I provide a certified minister. Um, whether it's of the same faith or of a different faith, we honor all faiths. And we do this through creative ways. So one of the main approaches that we use is neurologic music therapy, which is based in neuroscience. Um, these are tried, true, researched, and evaluated methodologies and modalities that allow us to bring in um, little fun parts. And this is, this is going to be a little interactive because we'd like to give you an example of what this is like. Um, don't know who wants to play an instrument. Yeah? I have a couple people who are like, yeah? Okay. So therapeutic instrument playing, awesome sauce. I see some hands on the back too, yay. So therapeutic mm -hmm. instrument playing is exactly what it sounds like. And most people don't think of instrument playing as being super therapeutic until they do it. When you're really upset and in the back, just, yeah, to whosoever wants one and promise we're not gonna make you like do anything crazy like play the instrument by yourself and take a drum solo. We just. It's for the purpose of you getting to experience a little bit of what it is like. Uh, therapeutic instrument playing is, is a way to express yourself without having to say anything. So if you are able to imagine the instrument is an extension of your voice, then whatever you would like to say with your voice, you actually say with the instrument. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, no. I've been... My family has been a musical family for like years. Yeah. And I feel like it's just a way to express what I'm feeling. It is. That's beautiful. And I have wrote a song called Thinking About You, but I'm not going to get to that. Oh, I like that. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah, music is one of those things that you can use. So how many people know the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow? It's just a little song, right? So let's sing that together. And if you have something in your hand, shake it.
playing is like. It's not necessarily that you are having to produce all the music. It's not necessarily that you're having to be a professional musician. Our job is to make music the safe place for you to be in, to exist, to want to be, so that way you want to participate along with it. Does anybody notice the change in how you felt before we sang that and did that and how you feel now? Yeah, that's a little bit of what music therapy does for you. It changes the neurotransmitter emission from your cerebral cortex, which then goes into your cerebral spinal fluid and comes out through all your nerves in your body. So we are changing your cells. We're making the cells carry better endorphins, dopamine, serotonin. We are changing what is coming out of your brain. It's going into your body. It's changing your, your chemical balance and it's making how you feel different in the moment. We also use Omrex. Now this is one of my favorite things to do, oral, motor, and respiratory exercises. Because you know when you're a kid, you naturally engage in Omrex. Your parents tell you don't blow bubbles with your lips, but you're just walking around. <laughs> well, we do this on purpose. We do this intentionally, and we start off independent from an instrument and over time, we put it on an instrument. So, Omrex is one of those, everybody repeat after me. That's an example of Omrex. What we do is we use your breath, we use your average heart rate, which is somewhere between 60 and 100 beats per minute when you're inactive. We use that average and we use that specific exercise to start you where we need you to be and slow it down or speed it up as we need you to engage. And a lot of speech language pathologists do use these kinds of exercises because it helps with the re the reacquisition of speech. It helps with the reacquisition of new words, new word formation, but also gaining back something if it's been lost. And then rhythmic auditory stimulation. So I'm gonna ask Chris to give me some beat here. I'd like everybody, we're gonna we're gonna use our legs and our hands. It's gonna be glorious. Everybody ready? So on four, we have one, two, Three on four. So on four is when I want you to do something. We're going to start with the right side. So on four, you can kick, tap, lift. Okay? You get to pick what it is that you do. You can kick, you can tap, you can lift. Everybody understand? All right, here we go. So one, two, right leg. One, two, three, right leg. One, two, right leg. Now move. listen to the drum, right? So right hand. Right arm. Now try the left side. For somebody who has limited range of motion, this feels like exercise to them until they don't. And they stop thinking about the exercise. Right side. And they start thinking about the drum and then they start moving. Now, let's see, you guys are seated, so maybe you can do it all together. We'll do right leg, left leg, right arm, and left arm. What do you think? Everybody give it a go. Here we go. One, two, three, all together. You got it. <laughs> all together. You got it. Okay, one big time. Some of the, the methodologies that we use and then also we do creative music therapy uh, creative music therapy was developed by doctors Nordoff and doctors Robbins in the 1930s and creative music therapy we use because there is no specific intervention uh, it's mostly improvisation so sometimes we come in and that looks like blues banging on the drum sometimes that looks like we're just gonna sing the blues what blues pick a blues 
we do the Jesus Loves Me blues, we do the Nobody Loves Me blues, we do the Left Toe Is Itching blues, um, we do the I've Been in Traction for Six Weeks and I'm Tired of Being Here blues. We do all the blues. You pick a blues, whatever it is that you're experiencing, we give you a form to put it in and the form just happens to be the music and the music allows you to express yourself and a lot of our clients really really love that one and um, we also do the behavioral approach which is music for a specific change if there is something that we need you to do like flexion intention we need you to reach we need you to pull back then we put in front of you instruments that will encourage you to reach and pull back Sometimes that looks like playing a xylophone. Sometimes that looks like banging on drums. Sometimes that looks like hitting tambourines. Sometimes that looks like taps on your feet. So that way you feel like you're making music while engaged in something. Um, and we also have the cognitive behavioral approach, which is where we use music to bring about a change in what you're thinking about. So what you speak about changes and what you feel changes. And that is always based on preferred music. Uh, we use songs from pop culture, we use classical music, we use, well, some, some of our older people really love Bob Marley. And so, you know, don't worry about a thing, we use that song. Um, we use whatever music it is that reaches somebody where they are to, and then helps us to move uh, them to where they need to be. That could be the bongo. It could. And these are just some of the benefits of music therapy. So uh, your overall cardiovascular health with uh, consistency does improve with music therapy. And once we improve your overall cardiovascular health, what that means is we increase the blood flow and oxygenation. That doesn't just happen for your heart, it happens for your brain, it happens for your lungs, it happens for your digestive system, and it happens for your limbs. So it moves all across the body. As I said earlier, we're starting with a domino effect and we're knocking over the first domino. And our goal is to keep knocking over that first domino until your body redevelops a new way of functioning. It also increases energy production and enzyme stimulation, which converts food into energy. That's a fancy way of saying music therapy allows us to do something like increase immunoglobulin A, which is something that's only produced when you're singing. If we have you sing, and you're singing in a certain way, certain sequences, certain tonalities, then what ends up happening is you have better digestion. You have better digestion because we're going to induce belching, and we're also going to teach you how to you know, belch gracefully so that way you don't just scare everybody in the room. But it's one of those, it's one of those nice little medical neuron, neuroscience-y things that allows us to bring about most effective change in a really sneaky kind of way. Because if you're not hungry, say you've gone through so many bouts of chemotherapy, so many bouts of radiation, and you're not hungry, and you really want to eat, but you need something. Immunoglobulin A is produced through saliva excretion. We make you sing or we encourage you to sing so that way your body naturally produces more saliva and the production of more saliva now your body has within it the enzymes necessary to break down your food at the rate that it's supposed to be broken down. This also by having overall cardiovascular health helps to decrease your ability to get sick. When you're happy up here, you're happy in here, you're happy in here, you're happy everywhere. And that's just kind of the way that our bodies work because what we think about, we talk about, what we talk about, we feel and we experience. And another benefit, uh, these are uh, uh, physiological benefits, we increase the stroke volume. So what we are able to do is to increase the efficacy and how the heart works through your ventricles and your atrial uh, functions. We increase how much blood your body is pumping through at any given point in time. What should be happening is about a cup should be going through each pump. And for some people, when they're depressed in their head, then they have depressed cardiac function. And the depression of cardiac function, they're not getting enough blood stroking through their bodies, which decreases the amount of oxygen that goes to the brain. So we use this to improve another direction. This also increases healthy cholesterol while decreasing unhealthy triglycerides. Uh, we don't like to make any guarantees in music therapy. We're not magic healers. We don't even know how this happens. We just know that it does. So some people come to us. <laughs> it's one of those like little mysteries, right? Some people come to us, 
They're like, I want to work on my cholesterol. Groovy, we're gonna drum a lot. We're gonna drum a whole lot. We might throw in some yoga and meditation and it's glorious. But what ends up happening is they come back with their doctor's report and it says, hey, my, my cholesterol's gotten better. And the doctors are, whoa, whoa, what did you do? We drummed. That's what we did. It's just we're changing cells from the inside out. And then this also gives you overall increased immuno health. It's really hard to get sick when you're super happy. It just is. Um, some of the neurological benefits. Because of the uh, production of endorphins and other neurotransmissions, neurotransmitters that we are changing, this allows us to change what's coming into your body, and it changes how it feels. This also allows us to regulate your main five brain waves of functioning. And in regulating those things, you sleep better, you wake better, you have a period where, you, where you're a little, it's in the middle of the afternoon, it's usually in your theta wave functioning, where you're just a little bit more fatigued than normal. All of these functions are produced for the better. And it also allows us to develop and work on neuroplasticity so that way you are able to learn and retain things better. Yes, sir? Uh, yeah. Uh, again, I have wrote a song, and that is how I, I was just, like, expressing my feelings into lyrics. Yes. And smushing it up into a beat. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, music is great. It allows us to do that. You know why? Because music speaks what cannot be expressed. It soothes the mind and it gives it rest. It heals the heart and makes it whole and it flows from heaven to the soul. We don't know who said this, but we agree with it 100%. We can't explain what music does for each person. There's a song for you. There's a song for me. There's a song for everybody. And our job is to help you tap into that so that way you are able to express yourself and live your best life. And sometimes that means just being well in the midst of trauma. So that's music therapy. And uh, we also like to drum outside and have like random bonfires. It's fantastic. You guys should join us. We uh, do offer uh, free to the community drum circles once a month where we just invite people out to our facility. Whosoever will come, we provide the instruments and, and the beverages. Um, it's a clean, good, good, good time. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, we do. We have pianos. <laughs> And, yeah, and we teach that we, we teach for some people if they want to learn an instrument, their therapy for them looks like music lessons. But what we are able to do is we're, we're able to adapt how the instrument is taught. So we teach the instrument to the functioning level and then help them gain. Some of, uh, one of our best drummers has no feet. Um, one of our best pianists only has three fingers. So it just depends on what somebody wants to do as to what they are able to do. If you have a desire to do it, then we have a desire to help you see that, that goal for yourself fulfilled. Yes, ma'am. And I play piano with one hand. That is wonderful. Yeah. That is super wonderful. I'm not able to move my left hand at the moment, but I can play with my right. That's so wonderful. See, that's a beautiful thing. That's a start. And we can sing right Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's super awesome. So that's a little bit about music therapy. Thank you guys so much for coming and hearing about it. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll be in the, in the center. We have a booth. It's on the right side of the room. If you just swing by, we'll share some information with you. <laughs>